Hello and welcome to episode one of our unknown, unnamed movie podcast, named to be announced later in the future. My name is Joel. And I'm Martin. And today we will be reviewing 2009's The Unborn. Now, the, like this movie should have been unborn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll get to, we'll get to that in, in a second. All right, let's start at the uh, the beginning here, Martin. What is your association with the Unborn, if at any? Has you seen it before? No, this is my uh, first experience um, with anything Unborn that I know of. <laughs> and uh, I mean, honestly, before the movie started, I thought it was called something Morning or something Summer, <laughs> and then this. <laughs> This pile came over here and came on. I knew immediately from the DVD menu screen, which consisted of dogs and cats and women and children with upside down heads walking around like spiders, that something special was going to happen. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) As for me, I remember this movie when it came out. It came out around almost the exact same time as The Uninvited. So you had The Unborn and The Uninvited, two unmovies out like in the same week or something and I don't know like like what's I thought that was interesting that they they had these two very similar titled movies I did see The Uninvited before I saw The Unborn and uh (laughs) they were both great (laughs) yeah they're both amazing I'm not sure which is better The Unborn or The Uninvited maybe we can talk about that later okay studios do this constantly though where they have movies with extraordinarily similar titles like they're going to trick people into going to see them in the theater because they're going to confuse I guess the actual title of the movie. Maybe they'll see advertising for one and go to the other by mistake. Okay, so tell me, Martin, what did you think of The Unborn? Um, I guess I'm going to start with something positive. I thought that the way that the shots were laid out um, and lined up were interesting and art- artistically well done. Um... They were very pretty, and uh, you, you, you could tell that the director of photography took a lot of time thinking about how the scenes were going to be set up. Um, unfortunately, he was the director of photography in a movie that had the most bizarre plots, horrible story, and <laughs> I, I, I don't even know if I can call it acting, but he just... At least there was that going for it. <laughs> I mean, what did what I did agree. you what did you think of of? I, 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 well, I will agree with you with that. I thought the movie looked great. It looked pretty amazing, and I don't think anybody's going to take that away from it. The shots are really nice. They had this really nice kind of um, music video looking lens flare all yeah. over the place. This looked like a music video. This whole movie, kind of, <laughs> it, it kind of did. Like, it's definitely this movie to me is indicative of everything that's wrong with modern horror movies. This is like the template for every shitty horror movie that's out today. Like this is such a paint by numbers kind of thing. Everything about it was just so generic. I noticed almost no, not not almost, all. Every scare in this movie was like this. Boom. Like just a loud noise, right? Pretty much they would try to sneak them in by delaying them by yeah. an extra yes. three or four yes. seconds before yes, you were, and it wouldn't even be the same scene they would be you know the automatic change scene showing a train really loud oh that was that was laughable <laughs> and it was kind of embarrassing actually that they did that i wrote down in my notes that horror movies are so formulaic it's sad in the middle <laughs> of this movie <laughs> so i mean i guess that's tantamount to what you just what you were speaking of yeah it's like it's ridiculous. Like the one that I, I thought was nice, they kind of threw the convention on its head a little bit. Was when she was going to the mirror in her bathroom. She's like, "Oh, I'm gonna open the mirror and then close it. Open the mirror and close it." How many times have you seen this stupid trick? She closes the mirror and there's somebody behind her. Yeah. And then boom, shock. And this one, they kind of flipped it, and instead of there being something behind her, it was inside the medicine yeah. cabinet. Whoa. Yeah, that really uh Yeah, there is that really blew my uh blew my mind there. It was amazing. I guess I was kind of curious about what you thought of all of the uh at least in the first third of the movie, they had a lot of historical references to different different ghosts, occult related 
I guess, aspects of what could be haunting her. And they would just tweak it to make their plot viable. It all seemed really one-dimensional to me. Like, uh, like the screenwriter just wanted to pepper his... Like, he took a, he took a trip, 10-minute trip to Wikipedia, looked up ghosts, got some names, slapped them on his script, done. You know, just to add a little color to it. But, yeah, uh, I mean, that was the purpose of her, her best friend's character was to kind of lead into to a paranormal explanation of, like, a cult mythology. Her explaining the mythology of the dogs... There Which, was a lot of explaining in this movie, a lot of exposition. And, and, and that was her purpose in the yeah. beginning. After that, she was kind of taken out of the movie and replaced by her grandmother in the mental, I guess, asylum. Again, the, her only purpose was just to explain what was happening. Um, I thought it was strewn together pretty poorly. And Okay, okay. That, uh, that I want to bring that up. Okay. I noticed that almost immediately, this movie just starts off and something weird happens. Immediately, We don't know who the character is. We don't know what the fuck's going on. Right off the bat, there's a dog wearing a mask. There's like a dead bait, like a dead boy walking around. It was weird. It was in like a cryogenic tube that Sama Saran looks like she came <laughs> out of like in the beginning of Super Metroid. It was oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, I don't, I, there, there was no, like, it, it, you're right. It, it, I feel like I was just dropped into this world with no buildup, nothing. And when they did it, start explaining everything, it felt really heavy-handed. Like that scene where they were like, oh, my dead mother, and she had a flashback to her. I wrote down heavy-handed backstory in my, in my note here. What, the other thing that I, that I found funny about like them trying to force some type of emotional content into the movie was beside her mother, they tried to make you feel guilty that she killed her half-brother with her umbilical cord in utero that made absolutely no sense to me at all how could she feel guilty about something she did in utero <laughs> like like they were trying to insinuate that this monster or ghost may be after her because she killed it in utero you know that's funny because when I first heard that this movie was called The Unborn my theory as to what this movie was going to be about was that she absorbed her twin in the womb and in later in life, that twin would manifest itself and try to take over her body. That's what I thought this was going to be about. Like the episode of the Venture Brothers? Yeah, exactly. But instead, we get this ridiculous plot about... <laughs> it wasn't even one about plot. what? <laughs> it, was, it was literally three different plots in one movie, and they all have different rules for each plot set. Okay, so let me get this straight. Just, just so I got it right. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, people die, and their ghost or their soul is not allowed entrance into heaven. Only so, sometimes, but we don't know why. And then they're they're cast back to Earth to wander between the in between, whatever that is, and looking for a portal. I'm assuming it's like a waiting room. To, yeah, to the doctor. Yeah, they, they 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 pull a ticket like at a butcher shop, and they have to wait. Yeah, the number comes up. So they have to wait until a body appears that is suitable for them. They made it pretty clear that the body that they have to possess has to be dead because they show that little boy dying and then being possessed by the ghost, right? Correct. Okay. If that's the case, and what we're dealing with in this movie is the ghost of some random person that we never actually see because they died in the 1800s or something. I don't know. Or 1900s, whenever. It whatever. From whenever. Why is it that we see the ghost as a, this particular little boy if that little boy was possessed by this unknown spirit? Why Wouldn't is he we, the grandmother's brother in Auschwitz? Yeah. Like he, what, shouldn't, he shouldn't look like that. Yeah. Would, shouldn't we see the ghost as what the ghost used to be when he was alive? Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah ask me that. You got to... I'm, I, I am answering you that. The, the answer would be yes, this movie is retarded. Actually, that's offensive to retarded people. This movie is really bad. <laughs> it's worse than, than retarded. I don't... It, it, I mean, there was a glory hole scene Yeah, there, there with, definitely with an eye that says, 
in the, in the <laughs> what did it say in, in the, the kingdom the, of the blind the one eyed the one eyed man, man is king, king. Now, insinuating a penis would come through that hole yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's like since when do glory holes like since when do uh, have like girls, philosophical writing around not it not just that like, <laughs> well, since when was the last you saw a glory hole in a woman's room like, <laughs> I didn't even realize that I thought that was like a gay <laughs> phenomenon you know like glory holes I didn't even realize that was the ladies room. I didn't, I didn't even put that together <laughs> Fucking ridiculous. Somebody took time to put like art around it, and then the metal looked like somebody melted it with like an acetylene torch. Yeah. Yeah. Like somebody did it with a blowtorch <laughs> melting the door to, to make their glory hole. They take these glory holes really seriously whenever Mike, unnamed city. M- whenever, whenever Michael Bay produces a movie, his glory holes are top notch. Oh, thank you for bringing that up. That's another thing. <laughs> I, I really knew nothing about this movie going in, except for the title, and when I saw that Platinum Dunes made it. I knew we were in trouble right off the bat. You were you were vocal about it. I was you, vocally you, upset. You, you, I was you very upset. You're like, right, right here, produced <laughs> by none other than Michael Bay himself. <laughs> you know, we know his hand. <laughs> his hand can be felt throughout the course of this movie. He was very heavy handed for someone who had absolutely nothing to do with the directing of the movie. But since he produced it, and he is most notoriously known as a director, you can tell that the, he definitely chose the female lead since she had she was a brunette, had straight hair, and looked like Megan Fox, just like the lead in Armageddon looked similar to Megan Fox. It's almost, you know, extremely predictable with him. In that scene when they were in the nightclub uh, and she was walking around, I was like, holy shit, this girl looks just like Megan Fox. I had never even heard of this person until it's today. Almost like, it's almost like he's cloning them. Her name is Odette Yusman, born 1985. And, fun fact, she debuted at an early age playing a young Spanish-speaking student named Rosa in Kindergarten Cop. Hmm. Does it say what her daddy did? I think he had a tumor. (laughs) Hey, she she was the lead girl in Cloverfield, apparently. Really? She quickly, with a lead role in J.J. Abrams' Cloverfield, was she the girlfriend that was, uh, that they went to go rescue her? Uh, I guess, yeah, right? No, that's that's surprising. Let's let's go back to the to the club scene though. They yeah. played a uh, they played Spitfire by Prodigy. I was pretty excited about that. That was the, oh, is uh, that what you were writing down? Yeah, the- I, was, I was scribbling that down really fast with exclamation points. Uh, Spitfire, uh, sick. Uh, <laughs> oh, I thought you were writing down like this is shitty. Or- no, no, I love that song. She was in Transformers too, apparently as Socialite Girl, whatever that is. Is that a superhero? Yeah, sure. Okay. So what what else, what else what else did you think of this movie? What else is going on? Um what I never understood throughout the entire course of the movie was the constant use of this beetle that would show up everywhere. It was in the entire movie. The black girl never explained what beetles had any had to do with it, and neither did the grandmother, so you're just left there with beetles coming out of eggs, coming out of toilets, coming out of walls, <laughs> beetles flying all over the place, beetles exploding out of sinks like and beetles on top of babies. Be- it, what did that have to do? What was the symbolism with that? Like, I, I have no, that. I have no idea. And are we just supposed to know as an audience, like, I guess beetles are gross. Yeah, I those, don't know. What were those tentacle things that were whipping, oh, coming out of the wall? Yeah, and whipping and flipping people, and you know, what the hell was that? And coming out of people's mouths. Yeah, that was that was that was Cthulhu. Uh, yeah, that's it. It was that's, it was that's, it was, that's it was very love. It was very Lovecraftian. I. By the way, in case you were wondering, uh, that guy was a rabbi. Yeah. It's very, it was very unclear. I thought as to what this guy was. Was he a priest? I knew he was a rabbi. Was he a rabbi? Was he this or that? I could tell. I can, I can tell different people the cloth and what. This is from looking. What at just what denomination? Just by looking in their eyes. Even if it's on a movie, I can tell. Yeah, I've always knew that about you. Here's a question for you. My gifts. What, what the hell kind of nickname is Jumby? Jumby wants to be born now. What it's is pro- that? It's probably some kid that they picked on in grammar school. Jumby. I kept thinking of like jambalaya, like soup, and I was getting hungry throughout the movie when they would say jumbie. But did you notice that they stopped mentioning it like halfway through the movie and then it was just never brought up again? Well, the, the person who mentioned it the most was um, the possessed little boy. Yeah. Remember him? That kid is currently on Modern Family. Have you ever seen that show? No. So I, I, I thought that was, that was fun that he was in there stabbing people and stuff. Speaking of stabbing people, this is the first horror movie I've ever seen where a normal, 
uninformed human boyfriend was ready to punch a demon in the face, like, without being, like, without being briefed about what's happening, his automatic reaction to a demon is to punch it in the face. He didn't have the typical disbelief scene either. He was like, no, he I didn't. Don't, I don't believe it. Like, uh, he's like, come on, you just, you just need some rest. You're, you're working too hard. Just get some rest. Contrast that with like paranormal activity. Yeah. That boyfriend. Remember him? Yeah. He was a, he was an asshole though. <laughs> he was big time, big time <laughs> dickhead. <laughs> I have a question for you. Here's something I've never heard of before. When she goes to the doctor and he says that she has a tetragametic chimerism and a heterochromia. I read that off of Wikipedia. I don't, I don't know what the fuck those things are. When you have a chimerism, that means that you have melding. A, you have a melding of two different types of tissue, but the chimeric tissue is from another organism that's not of the same species. But here, here's my question. He then tells her, you should go see a genetic counselor. What yeah, the hell is what that? What kind of advice is that? that what is that? That's is the that? most... Te- if, if, a, if any doctor said that to me, I would literally be terrified and shit my pants. <laughs> go see a genetic... Excuse me? So what was wrong with her? Like what? She had this predisposition to having A cancer twins. in her eye? No, twins. No, but he sent her to the counselor. Yeah, but the problem her, with her, her eye dealt with conjoined twins. He was saying that they shared tissue and... I guess that could be a problem as far as developing a fetus to full term is concerned. That's just a, a, a stab in the dark. I I, I just was, my eyes kind of glazed over. That, <laughs> that happened. I was like, what what is what's happening here? Here's a question for you: When they showed her mother just sitting there in in her uh, hospital, I said, "Man, that lady looks really familiar." Did you recognize who she was? No. Do you even remember looking at her? <laughs> Did you not, ever see what she looked like? Not really. I, I don't know. I'm trying to forget this movie as time goes on. I was like, man, this it's been about 20 minutes since it ended, so I forgot the majority of it already. <laughs> That's how good it was. <laughs> it was uh, Carla Gugino. You know who that is? Negative. I'll tell you right now. She was in uh, Sin City. She was naked in that. Oh! She was the oh, mom oh, in Spy oh, Kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She was also naked in that. Yeah, big time. <laughs> Through all three of them, she was naked. All, all three Spy Kids. Yeah. Just out of um, curiosity, what was your reaction when they all of a sudden took their their plot, attached it to a very heavy rock, and threw it over a cliff into Holocaust Survivor World? That seemed really inappropriate to me to just graft on this ridiculous Holocaust uh Plot. You know, I had a similar reaction to Shutter Island earlier this year. They had a Holocaust uh, subplot just grafted to it, it out, of, out of nowhere. It was it was the most bizarre. It was almost like it was a plot interference, where they they took a, a a linear plot that had ups and downs, kept in the in the same timeline, and all of a sudden brought their timeline back sixty or seventy years to Auschwitz. Yep, which was really jarring and and took me out of uh, any type of of uh, immersion I had in the movie at all, which was little to begin with. Uh, the the whole subplot of them being uh, experimented on by Nazi scientists, but the experiments bordered on the occult. On don't, the occult, don't, don't forget that. Yeah, they were in Castle Wolfenstein the whole time <laughs> <laughs> doing these yeah, things. Yeah, they had that God mode activated. It's terrible. Like, what was the purpose of that? Couldn't it have just been like, my my little brother died. He was possessed by a ghost. The end. Well, I don't know if you saw that they were trying to uh, turn their eyes blue. For reasons unknown. But if you didn't notice later on in their movie, their eyes were completely white, god mode. Like, like Return to Castle Wolfenstein 3D. That's where they were, there's a subtle reference. That that was a Wolfenstein just, just, reference just for, for the movie. Just for you. Just for me. Referencing a video game that came out in 1991. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that stuff was really bad, really pointless. Okay, so the ghost was possessing multiple people throughout the course of the movie and taking over, just just flat out taking over their bodies. Isn't that entering our world in and of itself? Right? Isn't that enough? Why do, why do they need her? Why does it need the hero's body? It it never explains that. I, I assumed it wanted to get revenge on the grandmother for killing it and just follow down the female lineage. 
but, why bother? But why bother with that? Why not just kill the grandmother? Because, again, again, remember, this is the ghost of some random person that we never met, we never see, we have nothing about. There is no family relation. Who cares? <laughs> just, get, just get some other body. <laughs> they they tried to answer that, I guess, obvious plot shit the bed problem there by saying, <laughs> don't try and rationalize it. It's already twisted. It's been on the other side for too long. You can't logically understand its <laughs> motives, which is true. I cannot logically understand its motives. They're retarded. Um, I wanted to bring up the uh, insinuation that mirrors are dimensional or universal gateways. Are they? Is that true? I don't so know. Worried? It was insinuated for the first time in the college classroom when he was saying that the universe going back to, to the beginning, essentially, you would just be looking at a mirrored image of the universe. That was their first reference. Then they... Uh, I don't remember that. <laughs> when they were sitting in the classroom, when she, <laughs> when, when, when she first... When all the writing turned to Jumby wants to be born, that's what he was saying in the background. Okay, you know, let's pause that for a second. Why did she even see that in the first place? Why? Why? Doesn't make any sense at all. Like, that would make sense if my plot line of conjoined fetus wants to come out you know that would work if, if she's seeing these it wants, I, want, I want to be born you know kind of thing well was that post her sleeping with her boyfriend post post uh, conception I think so spoiler yeah that's a spoiler alert there but uh, oh sorry everybody no yeah yeah <laughs> whatever well, who cares who gives a shit this movie's horrible so <laughs> It, yeah, this movie's one big allegory against the Yeah, this is of, this is against teen pregnancy. Yeah, teen teen twin pregnancies, I guess. Yeah, no no conjoined twins. Michael Bay is very much against that. What is Michael Bay's association with movies and black stereotypes? When they had the black girl driving the car, she had to be listening to really rap. loud hip hop or rap before she hits the kid. That was the funniest. Uh, <laughs> that this movie might be worth seeing just for that one scene where this girl runs over a little kid on a, on a big wheel. It was great that he didn't go under the car; that he went flying into the windshield and over it. <laughs> the laws of physics were completely bent and broken, and then he just got up and he was like, <laughs> "Jumpy wants to be born." <laughs> <laughs> that was verbatim. What, what, yeah, yeah, what yeah, happened? yeah. Hey, exactly hey, Jumpy wants to be born. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! It's all it's, it's it's in all of his movies though. It's it's these black stereotypes. And he, I mean, I knew that there was going to be one when I saw the production company, and I was waiting for it. And I was I was happy I got it. By the way, this movie was made by uh, Rogue Pictures. Me and this company do not get along. So let's uh. Let's run so, down. So watch out, Rogue Pictures, because yeah, Joel, I'm, I'm on the assault. Joel's Joel's looking for blood. Their mo is to make uh, pretty piss poor horror movies and comedies, apparently. So let me do a quick rundown of some of the movies that they've made. Horror it's, comedies. Yeah, hor horcoms, as I like to call them. It's good, good wombo. Okay, let's see. Uh, have you seen any of these movies? I'm about to uh, hopefully rattle not. off. Cry Wolf. No. The Hitcher. Nope. White Noise, The Light. Yes. Not even, wait, you saw White Noise 2 or 3 or whatever? Yeah. I, <laughs> just, just, just I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> I, I liked White Noise and whatever, just keep going. Okay, they did Doomsday, which I did not like at all. The Strangers, The Last House on the Left remake. I saw The Strangers. Fighting a perfect getaway, which I actually liked. So there's that. My soul to take, and this year's skyline and the warrior's way. Did so. you did you see skyline? No, I never got around to it. I wanted to. I, yeah, I remember you wanted to. I wanted to, but when I found out that it was directed by the guys that made Aliens vs Predator two, I kind of shied away. I balked a little bit. Remember when we saw Predators though? Predators That was a great movie Was amazing That was a great, <laughs> phenomenal movie I had a great time That was one of my highlights Take that, your mom Take your little sister Take your grandmother It's that good That makes my top 10 of the year Easily Yeah Top 10 Yeah Surprise wow, is, so, It was a surprise hit 
This poster my for, the, for the unborn is pretty amazing. It's pretty much just a shot of the girl's ass. That's it. And, and the ghost is in the mirror looking at it. <laughs> He's staring at her ass. <laughs> well, that's, that's the international poster that they have on Wikipedia. So that's pretty good. I'm pretty sure the ad for it is what's on the DVD. I mean, that's, I think that's what the real poster that we got in America was. Just her, like, screaming randomly. Oh, no, look, look, on the back of the box. There it is, the ass shot. There you go. To be completely honest, it's a very nice ass. She was very attractive. I thought she looked really good. Now, speaking of things that look good or not, let's talk about the special effects in this for a second. What did you think of the upside-down head thing that they did in this? It was really weird because some looked looked all right. Um, the man, the old man, <laughs> looked horrendous, <laughs> laughable. Like, it wasn't... I mean, I guess the intent was to create generate some kind of fear since it's a horror movie and it just generated giggling from me um but the dog i thought looked very very cool yeah that was the the one that, that I was the one good. that i thought when they it looked the, very good when they showed the dog just sitting mm-hmm. around in the uh the church or whatever the hell it was yeah and in, it just and in, it just sat in the there synagogue and it was just looking back and forth. You can tell that they just took a real dog's head and just like flipped it upside down in After Effects or something. And it looked really good. It looked phenomenal, especially when it licked its its maw. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. looked phenomenal. But the old man that we, we see in the trailers and the DVD menu and everything, he looked okay when he first flipped his head over. And but once he it, started moving up the stairs. They did that, that classic thing that the ring did you know like they cut out little they cut off frames yeah so it looks like he's jittering while he's walking they look really bad and when he's running down the hallway horrible horrible like that it looked looked like it was made out of plastic or something like his head do you think it was made out of polygons or nerves (laughs) b-splines b-splines polys of the future so what's a what's a dybbuk have you ever encountered this so the kids in this movie she's being haunted by a dybbuk have you ever encountered that um, in your studies? What's interesting is I I do study hermetic alchemy, and I've never heard of a dybbuk. <laughs> I, well, in case you were wondering, in Jewish folklore, a dybbuk is a malicious or benevolent possessing spirit believed to be the dislocated soul of a dead person. There you go. It's interesting because... Under Jewish canon, you should be able to literally banish it by invoking the name of God, and that's literally all it takes. It only has to be done once, according to scripture. Oh, okay. That's um. Well, here here they had to do an entire Catholic style um, exorcism, which I I don't believe they do in the Jewish faith. Well, if you want to uh, study more about dibics at home. <laughs> here are two Hopefully you don't. Here are two possible sources for you to look into. In the Monsters in the Garage episode of Rugrats, oh Grandpa Morris tells the children a story about a young hero who defeats a Dybbuk with his clobbermeister. Holy crap, I remember, I remember that. that this is there's literally blood coming out of my nose right now because that memory was drawn back from my childhood. The clobbermeister. The clobbermeister. I remember that. <laughs> it's up there with the episode of Doug where he's watching Waffle Stomper. Well, in episode 71 of the real Ghostbusters, the devil to pay, the monster fought by the Ghostbusters crew, is described as being a dibbic. So very cool. Two very uh, <laughs> encyclopedic sources <laughs> for your study on Dibbics, Rugrats and the Real Ghostbusters. It's I thought it was um, Ah the Real Ghostbusters. Was it Ah Real Monsters? Yeah, you're, you're, you're getting confused. Ah Real Monsters. That's that's a whole nother <laughs> a whole another podcast right there. You should just do a whole podcast on the Grumble. He had great uh, footwear. He had phenomenal footwear. They were red. They were sparkling sometimes. Pretty good. Beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what else is there to be said about the uh, the unborn? Is there is there anything at all? I mean, if I was going to sum this movie up for anybody that had an inkling or or interest in this movie in any way, shape, or form, it's that get together with a large group of friends, get some snacks. Yeah, which we and, didn't have. Which we didn't. Shut up, Joel. <laughs> anyway, get together with a group of friends, sit down, because this movie, plot-wise, is ridiculous. Um, you know, it does look good, but overall, 
you're, you're, you're not going to get any type of enjoyment from story or plot out of it. What, what you will get is, I don't know, a pretty good time from ridiculing it, which I had a great time ridiculing it. And, uh, you know, maybe a scare here or there. There were no scares to be found at all. You know, it's funny. Before I saw this movie, because for a full disclosure, this movie belongs to me. I've had it in my possession for quite some time. I bought it for a dollar. Hopefully... He's been haunted ever since he, he purchased it. Yeah, actually. I'm really... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> been haunted by watching the movie, and now after we saw it, we're going to be haunted by its memory. Maybe I can get my dollar back. <laughs> it's been a couple months since I bought it. I mean, when I first... I tried to watch this movie a couple months ago, and it was like three in the morning, and I popped the DVD in, and there were a lot of shocking graphic images hit that hit me. In the DVD menu, upside down dog head, insane looking mental patient with an upside down head, dead baby. I thought to myself, wow, perhaps I shouldn't watch this movie at 3 a.m. It might be a little too freaky. <laughs> if I could go back in time and tell myself, it wasn't that don't it was, even bother. It, it wasn't freaky at all. When, when I said scares, I just meant like startle from sudden loud noises, I if guess. If you're in a theater... And you were a 13-year-old girl. Yes. These would startle you big time. I, 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 I am a 13-year-old girl. On the inside. In, yeah. Where you're soft. In my heart. Yeah, like a woman. Okay. Perfect. So, as for me, I would not recommend The Unborn. This movie was pretty lousy. It's a shame, too, because this is one of those movies where you look at it and you can see that a lot of talented people worked on it. It looked really good, but the story was complete shit. And that's the director's fault because he wrote it. <laughs> the acting was horrible, but again, that's the director's fault because he wrote it and didn't attract any talent. He didn't get any, any talent. He didn't get any good performances. That girl, Odette, was horrible. She was really bad in some of those scenes. Dad, I need to know, talking about her dead mother, which was supposed to invoke some kind of emotion, kind of invoked... Do you believe in ghosts? You know I do. Terrible. Terrible. Remember that? I feel like somebody could have given me, I don't know, 170 milligrams of Oxycontin and laid me down on a bed and I would have came up with a better, more convincing performance <laughs> about my dead mother <laughs> in a half coma. That's It, it was that bad. Yeah, this movie was really half-baked. Like they, What a shame. This, this could have been a good movie. Could have been cool, right? I mean, it had, it had the ingredients. I think that if, you, if, if you're somebody who enjoys making fun of movies that are you know have a horrible plot were written very poorly and have horrible acting which i am then uh you know you can get together with a group of friends and rip it apart it's kind of funny but if you're actually gonna sit down by yourself and have a evening of enjoyment <laughs> i would not suggest this movie in any way shape or form you know just just so you know in case you were wondering take a guess i want you to take a guess how much do you think this movie cost and how much you think it made? Oh man, that's that's that that's pretty good. Um, it looked good, and there was a decent amount of effects in it. So I'm gonna say it probably cost them twenty five to thirty mil. Okay, it's a good guess. And it probably made somewhere around eight or nine. Oh, you thought it was a bomb? Box office bomb? Why it did well? Well, <laughs> get ready for this. Uh, the movie cost fifteen million to make, and the gross revenue seventy five million dollars. Ah, oh, fuck you, Michael Bay. <laughs> hate you. Yeah, it's Platinum Dunes for you, man. They, they really knock them out of the park. It, you know, it made so much money, you think we'll get an Unborn 2? Um, There's so many unanswered questions. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight because I, I just really need to know. I need to know more about Dibbix. <laughs> Dibbix and Holocaust ghosts and... Is that thing? I need to know more about these occult experimentations <clears throat> that occurred back at Auschwitz. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so Martin, out of one to five stars, what do you give The Unborn? I give this movie a blazing, hot, blistering, steamy one out of five stars. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't give those out lightly. <laughs> I, 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 I don't. I'm usually twos or threes. So Okay, I'm going to go with a two out of five because it didn't make me angry. I didn't hate it. You know, it looked good. The girl was hot. Some of the effects look nice. That's about it. Everything else was kind of shit, but 
two. That's, that's enough for a two out of five. I feel like if there was a mystery science theater in you know thirty years from now, this movie would end up on it. Oh yeah, and this so, and the uninvited. This and the uninvited would be perfect for that movie, and that's how I'm approaching it right now for my enjoyment. It was just getting ripped apart, <laughs> <laughs> and and once that happens, if a movie is that terrible, then you know I'm giving it a one out of five. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hopefully this is the last horror movie I have to watch <laughs> in quite some time. <laughs> I think I've had it enough. literally made you emotionally drained for the genre. <laughs> okay, so we watched the theatrical cut, and this DVD has both theatrical and unrated. What could we have possibly have missed out on, do you think? Titty shot, maybe? Maybe, I, I don't know. I don't really see where, I mean, I see maybe one scene where it could have happened. She was naked in the shower. You think that's where it happened? Yeah. I think it might have happened in the bathroom. What was going on in the bathroom? She was walking around? Oh, you're, you're thinking in the bed? When they're having sex? No, or just when she was laying doing? in the bed. Oh, 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 yeah, and she was getting molested by the uh, the ghost. Yeah, there, 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 there could have been a little bit of breasticle shot yeah, that there. was kinky. Super kinky. Mm-hmm. Ghost molestation. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that's it. I mean, I guess that wraps it up for the unborn. So a, a one and a two out of five, that's hardly a uh, a stellar recommendation from either of us. But uh, you don't have to take my word for it. Dun, dun, dun. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm always there for you. Don't worry. Okay, so so next, hopefully if we do this again for our next episode, we'll have a title for this podcast. Yeah. And uh, a little more structure. And... Uh, We'll watch a real movie next time, not this <laughs> fucking joke. <laughs> okay, so um, tune in, tune in next time, I guess. Whenever that will be. Whenever that is. So my name is Joel, and I'm Martin. So uh, we'll see you next time. Later. <laughs>